Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another day of Vlogmas. And today, let's talk about Agatha Christie. To my shame, I have no physical copies to hold up for you today, because while I love Agatha Christie, as I'm going to be talking about today, I don't actually own any physical copies of her books, I realise, which I really, I really should fix. I've read everything I've read by her from the library or on Kindle or on audiobook, mostly from the library. Um, because the library has a lot of her work, and she wrote a lot. She wrote so much that it's hard to know where to begin in terms of owning books by her, but really I ought to own some, shouldn't I? However, that's beside the point. Today I wanted to talk about Agatha Christie. I am relatively new to Agatha Christie. I have read eight of her many, 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 many novels, and the majority of those eight I think I read this year. But in the last year and a bit I have really fallen in love with her writing and her work, and I desperately want to read more by her. I want to read at some point everything by her, so I thought I would make, partly for Vlogmas and partly in honour of the cloak and dagger mystery themed readathon that is going on at the moment, I thought I would make a video about Agatha Christie and talk about some of the reasons why I like her books and also about those books that I have read so far and those that I intend to read in the future. So one of the reasons why I love Agatha Christie is just that I really really love her writing style. It is so quick and so easy to read and so enjoyable and fast, like I can get through an Agatha Christie in like three or four hours which is just wonderful because sometimes you just want to read a book in one sitting, especially a really gripping murder mystery like Agatha Christie's. They're so engaging to read really really quickly and her writing style is so wonderful. One thing I find quite interesting is that in the books that I have read by her I have encountered two slightly different writing styles. The books of hers that I've read that are in the first person tend to be a bit more kind of prosy and lyrical and more in the style of like Sherlock Holmes mysteries, whereas the books I've read by her in the third person, which is the majority of what I've read, tend to be much more dialogue heavy, quite short sentences, short small paragraphs, lots of white space on the page, very punchy, almost like like a play at some points in the very dialogue heavy nature of the works, and just so like quick and readable and enjoyable. I just I really really love the way she writes and it makes her work so engaging and accessible and so quick and fun to read. Another thing I love about Agatha Christie is her characterization. I think she is a real master of characterization. If you think about the like, there must be millions of characters across the whole body of her work and yet they all feel real and fleshed out and engaging and interesting and she's very very brilliant at just using like one or two sentences to really get you into a character's head and to really make you understand them. For example, I've just finished reading Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None, and in just the first chapter you go through like the majority of the central ten characters' heads very quickly and let you get such a strong sense of all of them. Like she's a real master of really quickly sh telling you a lot about a character, but also a real master of never giving too much away, so that you're never really sure of anybody. Another thing I love about her books is just the kind of atmosphere and tone of them. They're all murder mysteries and some of them deal with quite dark themes, but at the same time they are really cosy. I've never quite got my head around how cosy mysteries work and how murder mysteries can be cosy, but somehow they can. I think maybe it's just the fact of like things being solved at the end and the fact that a little old lady like Miss Marple or a little old man like Monsieur Poirot can come in and like save the day just through the powers of like order and clever thinking. I think that in itself is like reassuring and comforting in some way and that is one of the things I love about Agatha Christie and I think that is so wonderful and enjoyable about her work. Also the fact that although they are very dark in some ways they're also like really really witty and quite humorous at points as well which I find very entertaining. Especially like reading The Mysterious Affair at Styles, which is the first Poirot book, and Hastings like constantly underestimating Poirot and how at times stupid Hastings is and at times how clever Poirot is, it's just absolutely hilarious, like it's laugh out loud funny at some points and especially the way Hastings talks about women, he's like very like considers himself to be very attractive when he's probably not. Um, I don't know, I've only read the one book with Hastings in, but at least in that book he, he seems to think a lot of women are attracted to him who, who really find the idea of such a thing laughable. He, he kind of struggles with his own vanity and I, it's just, it's so wittily, wonderfully written. And I also love the excitement of Agatha Christie's books. Like I said, most of the books I've read by heart I've read in just the space of a few hours because they are so engaging and so gripping that you really can fly through them, partly just because you want to know what happens and partly because the ease of her writing just carries you through all the way to the end. I am not someone who is in general able to guess the resolutions to murder mysteries, to any of those that I read, and it's very rare that I guess a solution to an Agatha Christie book, but I love that! I like not knowing until the end, but also getting a sense of how Poirot or whoever manages to piece all the clues together, because you do often get a sense of that in Agatha Christie, it's something I love about the Poirot books, and I just really really enjoy 
seeing everything come together even if I'm not able to predict the outcome myself. Next I want to go through the eight Agatha Christie novels that I have read. So far my Agatha Christie reading has been quite Poirot dominated. I've read two standalones, one Miss Marple and the other five have all been Poirot novels. I'm not attempting to read the Poirot or Miss Marple books in order in any way because in general they stand fairly well on their own um, but and I think they're fairly easy to pick up kind of whichever one you want and mostly my reading so far has been dictated either by like book clubs or what films are coming out or um, what books I have access to at my library. So I'm going from my least favourite to my favourite Agatha Christie that I've read so far. My least favourite so far would have to be The Sitterford Mystery. This is one of her standalone mysteries. It tells the story of what happens when a man called Mr Trevelyan is murdered. His nephew is immediately taken into custody but his nephew's fiance and a local reporter team up to kind of prove that it wasn't in fact the nephew who did it. Now the Sidford Mystery is a really great novel and one I would highly recommend. The reason why it's lowest down my list is because I found the ending quite disappointing. Not to do with anything to do with the book, but because I had watched a film adaptation of The Sidford Mystery a long time ago as a teenager. It was one of my favourite Miss Marples and I watched it again and again. And I went into the book knowing that the book was quite different from the film. Knowing that Miss Marple was in the film and Miss Marple was not in the book. What I didn't realise is that they changed who the murderer was um, in the film, which meant I thought I knew reading the book who the murderer was and I was going through like spotting lots of clues and then it turned out it was someone different. If I'd read the book without having seen the film first it wouldn't have bothered me in the slightest but because I remembered the film so well and liked the solution in the film I just found the book a really weird experience because I found the ending a great letdown because I had thought something else is going on but that's the film's fault not the book so you know why they changed the murder is beyond me but it's also a good film so you know next at number seven i have one to buckle my shoe this is a poirot novel it's one i really enjoyed just not quite as memorable as some of the other agatha christie's that i've read one day poirot goes to the dentist in the morning and then he is called back to the same dental practice in the afternoon because his dentist has been murdered. It's an engaging and enjoyable Poirot novel with a quite a good solution but it's just not quite as memorable for me as some of the other Poirot books. At number six I have Mystery of the Blue Train. This tells the story of a theft that takes place on a train journey and what happens when Poirot and the people involved try to like stage the exact same journey again to work out how it happened. This is the first Agatha Christie I read and it was a little while ago so I don't remember it as well as some of the others. It's an engaging enjoyable read but again just not quite my favourite. One of the things I love about Agatha Christie is that she has so many books and there are so many to read and some of them are real standouts and some of them are just really enjoyable while you're reading them and that's fine as well. At number five I have Three Act Tragedy. This is another Poirot one and one that I really enjoyed. Poirot goes to a dinner party one day and while there somebody is murdered and from then on he has to find out why. And it becomes curious and curiouser when a little while later a very similar dinner party is staged with all of the same people except Poirot and somebody else dies and slowly Poirot has to unravel quite why this has happened and what this all means. Very intriguing and interesting. I really enjoyed this one especially like all of the subplots going on at the same time as what's happening with Poirot. It's also one of the Poirot novels where you don't follow Poirot the whole time um, and a lot of the time you are following other characters which I found really really interesting. And number four I have The Moving Finger. This is the only Miss Marple novel I've read and one that I really enjoyed. In fact Miss Marple isn't even in it that much. I feel like I need to read some of the more Miss Marple Marple, Miss Marple books before I make a judgment on her as a character and whether I like her books or the Poirot books more but I really enjoyed The Moving Finger. This is one of the first person ones told by kind of a bystander. The Moving Finger is set in a small village where some residents start receiving kind of threatening or blackmailing letters accusing them of various things and one day someone is found dead with one of these letters beside them and everything kind of goes on from there and various mysterious things start to unfold. I really really enjoyed this one especially because of the like romantic subplot. That was a thing that I really really enjoyed about this book and found really really engaging and interesting. It's a really rewarding lovely little story and I definitely want to read more Miss Marple books in the future. At number three I have The Mysterious Affair at Styles. This is the first Poirot book. In fact it is the first novel by Agatha Christie and it follows a young man called Hastings who is on leave from service during the First World War and he goes to stay with some friends at a house called Styles. and while there his friend's stepmother is murdered and of course Poirot turns up and everything gets complicated as they try and solve the mystery. I really really love this one especially the relationship between Hastings and Poirot and how you see Poirot's genius in like even greater light by contrasting it to Hastings sometimes clueless nature and um, it's really really fun the characterization is so strong and it's a really really great definitely one I would recommend and a great place to start with Poirot. At number two I have The Murder on the Orient Express which is another Poirot novel one of 
Agatha Christie's best known books and I understand why. I think it's incredible, really fantastic. I read it all in one day, absolutely devoured it and loved it. The solution is genius and so good and yeah, I cannot recommend it enough. Such an engaging, quick read as well, very dialogue heavy and really, really enjoyable. But my favourite Agatha Christie I think would have to be And Then There Were None, though this is the most recent one I've read so this might well change in the future, but it's absolutely incredible. And Then There Were None is a standalone book and it follows what happens when 10 people are summoned to an island under slightly mysterious circumstances. They all think they know why they're going there, but when they get there they realise they don't quite know why. They all have dinner together, a bit confused as to where the host or hostess who invited them are, and then they go into the drawing room. And then the gramophone starts playing, and on the gramophone record a person reads off accusations against all 10 people, accusing them of deliberately or through careless behaviour causing the deaths of various people. And then one of them dies. And things start to go on from there. It's very creepy. It's probably the darkest Agatha Christie I've read. Um, and is... I don't know whether or not I should say it's scary. I didn't find it at all scary while I was reading it. But as soon as I finished reading it, I then was a bit scared. Um, so... I don't know what that means. Maybe I'm just weird. But it's a really, really brilliant, engaging read. So clever and compelling and engaging, like so exciting and dramatic. I just, I cannot recommend it enough. The characterization and the drama and the kind of psychological complexity of it is just really, really wonderful. I would definitely urge you read it. So those are the eight Agatha Christie books I've read so far. I know there'll be a lot more for me to read in the future. She wrote so, so many books. I'm hoping to read on with the Poirot novels, hopefully potentially in order. Nick and I listened to Mysterious Affair at Styles together and really enjoyed it. So I think we might hopefully go through the rest of the Poirot series, listening to them on audiobook together, um, which I'd really enjoy. And then in the meantime, in sort of physical books, I need to get started on reading more of Miss Marple. I don't know whether or not I'll try and pick them up in chronological order. It'll probably depend on what my library has, but I definitely want to read some books in which Miss Marple features more heavily because when I used to watch like the adaptations as a child I used to like Miss Marple more than Poirot um, but I don't really remember most of the Miss Marples that I saw now um, apart from The Sith of Mystery which is actually not a Miss Marple um, so I don't know I don't think I'll know any of the plots um, but I do need to get around to discovering some of the Miss Marples um, and reading a bit more on those books. I also want to pick up the Tommy and Tuppence books which are another series which I know I've heard are really really good things about and I definitely want to pick up too and then just more of her standalone as well. So I'd love some more Agatha Christie recommendations. I am by no means a great source of knowledge when it comes to Agatha Christie. I'm still fairly new to her work. If you want to know much more about Agatha Christie, I will link down below the channel of Lil from Lil's Vintage World, who knows an awful lot about Agatha Christie and who I'm always going to for Agatha Christie recommendations. But if you have any particular recommendations down in the comments of where you think I should go next with Agatha Christie or great standalones or Miss Marple novels to read on with, I would really, really appreciate that. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.